Thanks for joining us at XM.com. This is the Weekly Outlook. I'm Cristina Marujos, and joining me today is Mario Sachikiriakos, investment analyst. We'll be having a look at the week ahead. This week, Mario's marked the beginning of a new era with Joe Biden being sworn in as the 46th president of the United States. And the latest political developments in the country were met with enthusiasm in the markets. We saw stocks reach new record highs in the last few days. But the question is, can this rally continue? Hello, Christina. Yes, I very much believe it can. So lately, we've been seeing expectations for a massive spending package in Congress. And at the same time, the Fed chief came out to reaffirm that his central bank is not even considering scaling back uh, its quantitative easing purchases. So you have a situation, I believe, Believe where the markets are looking ahead to a period where growth and inflation begin to accelerate, but the Fed holds interest rates on the floor, and that has been pushing real interest rates lower lately. The five-year U.S. real yield is at record lows as we speak. So, in turn, negative real rates are a blessing for most assets, especially stocks and gold to a lesser extent. So, the argument is, if bonds are negative yielding assets. And you lose money by purchasing bonds. Essentially, anything that offers you a positive real return is suddenly much more attractive. So, in this context, I think that the euphoria can continue. The U.S. is about to go on a federal spending spree. We have vaccines being rolled out. Central banks are all in. The Biden administration has promised to deliver even more stimulus down the road, and that's a great environment overall for the U.S. economy, for U.S. stocks, and ultimately for the U.S. dollar as well. I believe now the Fed. Has been clear; it doesn't even want to discuss tapering so early. But by the middle of the year, I believe it could be a different story. Inflation may begin to pick up, and that discussion could slowly come to the forefront. And markets might start speculating on that. FX is also a two-way street. So across the Atlantic, Europe is still in a harsh lockdown. It's way behind America in the vaccination race. Its economy is very weak and will almost certainly suffer a double depreciation. And we don't have any impressive stimulus in the pipeline either. So I think that the longer-term risks surrounding the euro dollar are tilted to the downside. For now, in the near term, I think other elements might influence the short-term price action. So, for example, will Biden manage to push? All of the 1.9 trillion he promised to Congress, or are we going to see that proposal being watered down as he negotiates with Republicans? We'll look at Europe, Marius, in a little bit, but for now, let's stay in the U.S. because the United States will have a rather busy week with the Fed meeting on Wednesday and with a flurry of economic data releases, including GDP numbers for quarter four. Will the dollar find some much-needed support? You think? I doubt it. I think that the overall picture for the dollar is positive, but I don't think we're going to get any rally on the Fed meeting. So first of all, there isn't any scope for changes in policy. So all of the price action will come from uh, Chairman Powell's comments during the press conference. Now the Fed has been calling for more government spending for a long time now, so Powell will probably be very excited about the latest developments from Congress. But he cannot be seen as being too happy. He and other senior Fed officials recently put. Back on this idea that a stronger economy, because of all this spending, will see the Fed scaling back its QE purchases, and I think he will stick to that message. He will remind markets that it's too early to be talking about tapering. The risks are still to the downside. We'll see what happens, and so on. Overall, I think that the promise that his Fed will remain full pedal to the metal until the end of the year, at least, would argue for maybe a small pullback in the dollar and some more upside in equities. However, I think these reactions will be relatively small. Instead, overall, the bigger variable in the near term, I think, will be how much stimulus we get out of Congress once the negotiations are done and dusted. And now crossing into Europe, Germany is also reporting GDP data for quarter four, while the jobs report for November are expected out of the United Kingdom on Tuesday. Both reports cover a time when the countries were in lockdown. So, how would the euro and sterling react to the data? Well, the German report is bound to be gloomy. I think the print is going to be negative. That would only reinforce the narrative that I was just describing of economic divergence between Europe and America, especially since typically Germany is much stronger than other European nations. Germany had powerful fiscal stimulus. It also had a slightly more relaxed lockdown. So, if the German print is pretty grim, then the rest of the eurozone will probably be even worse. Now, as far as the power. 
around is concerned, I don't think it's going to react to the economic data. They are pretty outdated already. And instead, the main variable for sterling may be the pace of the vaccination campaign. So investors go quite excited lately because Britain is leading the G10 economies in the vaccination race. And we are seeing a lot of hope uh, being priced into the market that it could be the first major economy to defeat the virus completely. So that's the main variable for the pound. And if everything continues to go as planned with the vaccination race, we could see the latest gains in the pound continue. Marius, thank you for joining me today. This was the weekly outlook. Thanks for watching at XM.com.